Hello and welcome back to this Common Lisp video series. In this video we are going to be looking at a Hangman game in Common Lisp. If you have been following the series you'll know we've been building up small games and I've been introducing uh, new concepts into each video. This video is going to have quite a few new concepts. Um, I'm going to try and be as brief as I can. I'm going to rely on you having seen videos before and skim over some of the material. Um, if it is, if you've not been watching the videos, I strongly encourage you to go back and watch previous videos uh, because this is already going to take about an hour and I don't want to waste any more of your time. So I'm going to load up um, a session and uh, we're just going to get straight into this. There's six functions that we need to write. Uh, to make this work uh, and we're going to start with one that if you've been following the series you're going to be familiar with. We're going to build a randomization function for picking something at random. In this game we're going to have um, the category is going to be sitcoms, we're going to have six sitcoms um, and we're going to pick a sitcom at random. So that's our first function. Now there's nothing in this function that uh, mandates it has to be working with strings. It's going to be, but there's nothing inherent about that function that means it works on strings. So if we can randomly call this function and get one, two, three, four, five, and six um, eventually, then we know this function is working. So we've got two, two, four, 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 one. We've got one, two, and four. We've got one, two, four, and six. One, two, four, and five. We're looking for three. There we go. We've got we've got all six items coming out of the list at random. We know that works. That's the first of our six functions done. Uh, the second thing is um, we we want a simple info function to print the status of the game. Now in Hangman, there are lives, there are guest letters, and then there's the scrambled up phrase. Um, so we're going to have a status, it takes scrambled uh, sitcom, it takes uh, lives and it takes guest letters. And all this is going to do is return a string. Um, so we are going to print lives uh, and that's going to be on a new line. Then we're going to print letters. And this is going to be uh, a funky string interpolation thing. Um, then we're going to have a new line. Then we're going to have sitcom. So we are going to have lives, guest letters, and a scrambled sitcom. Uh, and that's that's all this function is going to do. We've compiled that up. We're going to call it. Uh, there we go. Um, it prints lives ten letters sitcom. So I'm going to set that to two and add um, R in there. Uh, what you're looking at there is this this hash backslash r. This is Common Lisp's character type. Um, Common Lisp is a language where strings and characters are distinct data types. So um, unlike in Python where a, a one character string is a character um, and there's no distinction between characters and strings, Common Lisp does have this distinction and this is how um, this is how you represent characters and you can represent non-alphabetic characters as well like spaces and new lines and we'll see uh, certainly an example of space a little bit later but that's how we represent it and this status function it's just gonna um, you know it's going to represent the status of our game as we're playing it so it's doing everything that we want it to so 
that's our second of six functions. Uh, we are then going to um, scramble a um, the sitcom uh, such that it uses underscores or letters um, to represent the solved state of it to the player. So we are going to have a scramble sitcom function which takes the sitcom and guest letters and uh, this is going to introduce a new concept f let quick recap So a let uh, will create a series of pairings of values to symbols. So uh, this is one pairing, this is a second pairing, that's a third pairing. One is bound to the symbol A, two is bound to the symbol B. The string high is bound to the symbol C, and if we evaluate this, uh, it says nil because I'm using T, I should be using nil here. There we go, we get one, two, and high. Um, let's get rid of that um, new line character so we can see it easily. Um, there you go. Uh, in the bottom left hand corner. One, two and high. So that's what let does, it creates local variables in a small block. And f let does exactly the same but for functions. Um, now common lisp is a lisp2 which means it's got two namespaces, one for variables and one for functions. Unlike in Python or JavaScript where you can nest a function inside of itself and it won't be visible to other functions, common lisp throws all functions that are created with the fun into a global function namespace. So if you want to have function local functions, you must use flet or labels. flet, um, the functions are not recursive, labels they are. Um, it's like the difference between let and let star, which uh, if you're not aware, go and watch one of the previous videos. We touch on that um, briefly. So flet, um, it works just like let, we create bindings. So we got our list and we're going to create our letter or underscore function, which takes a letter. And um, what we need to do is do if or member letter guest letters equal letter. So that is our um, sort of local function inside of another function. Um, and we will be using this a little bit later uh, in a, fun uh, a function called format that will build up the representation of the scrambled, scrambled sitcom. Um, just making sure the parentheses all line up. So this function takes a letter and if that letter is a member of the guest letters um, list or that letter is equal to a space, we just return the letter. Otherwise we return the underscore and character. And again, this hash backslash underscore is the literal backslash character. Now we are going to format nil because we want to return a string. Uh, And this string is going to have uh, no spaces in it. Uh, that's right, that's what we want. Um, and we're going to use map car. And we're going to use a hash letter or underscore. And we're going to coerce. Uh, sitcom into being a list. Now uh, I'm going to compile this and I'm going to test this. And 
this has worked. Um, you can see in the bottom left hand corner there that we've got just got six underscores. So I am going to put the E character into the guest letters. And you can see that the two ears have appeared. So I'm going to put uh, C there. We've got that. I'm going to put R. Uh, H and S. So we've got cheers. So all the letters are there. Um, they don't have to be in order. We're just checking to see if they're present and it will um, build up the string where possible. Um, so let's unpack this. Uh, let's start from the coerce. Coerce takes an object, in this case sitcom, which is a string, and it'll coerce it to a list. Now, that shouldn't be too hard, it just uh, splits uh, you can see in the bottom there that instead of a string we've got a list of characters um, and that is exactly what we want. Now map car, if you are unfamiliar with the concept of a map function it um, takes a list, which is what we've got here with the coerce thing. We've we've built our list here, and it also takes a function. And for every item in the the list at the end, there it calls the function and builds up a new list, having transformed each item from the list through this function and spits a list out at the end. And because we're using fancy string formatting here that operates on a list, we're building a string. Um, up from that. Now I wonder, I've just had a bit of an epiphany here. So um, we can simplify this a little bit as it turns out. Um, sorry, I didn't see this before. Uh, we were using fancy you know, format nil stuff, but we can also use the coerce function again to um, operate against what we've done. So we're gonna use the coerce to break the string up into a list, perform a map operation on that list, and we're gonna coerce it back into a string, which seems a little counterintuitive, but that's kind of just how we, we need to do this. So that's our scramble sitcom function. Um, we've got two more um, utility functions to go, then we're done. Uh, and we can begin writing our game loop. So we're gonna uh, have a look at uh, our game over function. Uh, game over P is how you would write a game over um, function. Uh, predicate functions in, um, common lisp usually have a dash p suffix uh, scheme would have a question mark and i prefer that but in common lisp the idiom is for a predicate function you would do a dash p and uh, that represents the, the function returns a generalized boolean now game over takes lives it takes scrambled sitcom and what we then want to do is we want to do a cond, which is like a uh, three part, three or more part switch case. Um, and um, you would use this if you want to branch, but when is like a single branch if, unless is a single branch if not, if is a two branch, a true and a false. But if you need to do true, false, third, fourth, fifth, um, you use cond. Um, so we are going to do or um, now we are going to do uh, lives zero and this is going to be CPU Actually, we can simplify this further. Um, 
yeah, we're going to simplify this further. Um, so we're going to do or. If that or um, EQ nil position of an underscore in scrambled sitcom and this can indeed um, become an if Speaking of my my wrist support there, um, and there we go. So if there are no lives left, or um, there are no underscores left, then the game is over. Otherwise, it's not. So let's try this. Uh, let's compile it first. We're going to pass in zero lives and that, so and the game is over. So let's put in 10 lives. The game is not over because there are lives remaining and there are underscores in here, so let's put shears in here. Uh, and this is true, the game is over because we've solved the puzzle, so let's change those back to one underscore. It's nil. So we, we have our predicate function here. It works, so we, we can determine whether the game is over or not. So we're on to our fifth uh, function now for helping. Um, we are going to write a function for inputting a letter um, that is the player's guess. So we're going to call that get letter. And this needs to take guessed letters too, because we want this to recurse and loop and make sure that we handle certain cases. Uh, those cases being uh, if the user has just hit enter without typing something, we don't want that to fail. So we're going to use cond here. Um, and what we want to do is equal length. Um, oh, crap. I got a bit ahead of myself there. We want the user to enter a letter. So this isn't complete yet. Um, we also want to downcase what they enter because we're, we're just going to make it super easy. We're going to keep everything lowercase. Uh, so, um, we ask for a letter, we bind the value that comes back from this of lower casing read line and store it in user input. We're then going to do a cond, we're going to make sure that the length of user input uh, is not zero, because if it is, uh, we are simply going to call get letter uh, guest letters uh, we want to again loop if it already exists um, in the the guest letters list so we're going to do member
So there's a few things that we, we look at here. We, we get the letter from the user. Um, we're actually doing a read line that could take multiple uh, characters and we want to make sure that we only get the first one. So uh, we check to make sure that it's not an empty string, basically. If it is an empty string, then just recurse and come back into the function and ask again. Um, if it already exists in the guest letters, we recurse and ask again. Uh, member is a function that checks for presence. Um, uh, actually, that's going to be four. Um, so member gets a list of items from the point that um, we have requests. So it finds the value and gets you a list of everything from that point onwards. It's a generalized function, so it, it doesn't just say true or false. It's a, it gives you a truthy value, a non-empty list, and then lets you figure out what you want to do with it. So I could change this to seven, and it's going to say nil. There was nothing in the list with that. But with four, um, it doesn't just say true or false. It says a uh, true value, a non-empty list, and here is everything else. Um, so if we get a non-empty list here, um, then we know, you know, the the character was found in the list somewhere, and it's it's been entered before. So we we've got this here. Um, so let's uh, compile that. Let's open the REPL because input always, is always a bit tricky in the REPL. Um, so I'm going to magnify that a bit. We're just going to do get letter and we're going to pass in an empty list. Uh, and we're going to hit E. That worked. And I'm going to hit enter and it's prompted me again. I'm going to hit enter a second time. It's prompted again. I'm going to hit E. Uh, and uh, it did not like that. Um, Uh, okay, so I'll show you another trick I've learned. Space M R for REPL. We can restart the REPL if it gets stuck. You'll see on the right hand side it's restarting um, the Lisp process. Um, so there we go. Uh, I think in my first video I shut down my editor and uh, tried again. It's not necessary to do that and I have since learned. Uh, and all we're doing is we're testing get letter with an empty list. The, the, we're gonna hit E, it's figured it out. So we're gonna do this again with um, E already in the list. So E is asking us again, R, there you go. So it will loop and uh, it'll eventually stop looping when we give it something unique that it can work with. So uh, one, two, three, four, uh, five at the top there. We have everything we need for um, actually building the game loop now. So we're going to build this up here. Just a little dummy function. Um, now I'm going to introduce another new concept. I'm going to introduce the concept of key parameters. Now, uh, if you've used Python, you use quargs or default parameters in other languages, this is what we're talking about. Um, you can see here on, uh, you know, get letter. Get letter takes a parameter called guest letters. Um, now we can do some funky stuff with uh, parameters. We can do at uh, ampersand key sitcom nil lives ten and guest letters an empty list and we're going to write this game function in terms that you do not need to call it with parameters and it will figure out how to call itself if it's not given anything um, and we're very nearly there so the first thing we want to do is unless sitcom oh come on there we go
So there we go. We, we create a, another let block and it will use the functions that we've already created. Pick sitcom from the list of six sitcoms and it will bind the value returned by that function to the symbol sitcom. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're simply going to call game itself uh, with the keyword colon sitcom and that's how you create a keyword to prove it. Uh, you can see that calling type of on colon sitcom and keyword will say it's a keyword data type. So uh, this is a special uh, common list thing. Uh, this will bind uh, the sitcom parameter to the value that's paired with it. So we can now boot the game function with this. You do not have to provide um, any more arguments than you want. So because we've got default values for them all, in this case, we're only providing sitcom. We only need to provide sitcom because lives and guest letters is exactly what we want them to be. So that is, um, that's the first step in what we're wanting to do here. The next thing we want to do is, uh, because it's entirely possible that the game is running now, we want to get the game over state. You know, are we done with the game right now? Uh, so we want lives. Uh, we want to scramble the sitcom. Uh, and we want to do that with sitcom and guest letters um, to take lives. Yeah, that's all we need. Uh, so in this let block, when game is over, uh, we are going to return from game. Actually, we, we don't need to do format. Realistically speaking, all we need is game over. All we need is a value. Um, so when game is over, uh, right, great. So that's what happens when the game is, is over. So we, we can boot the game up. We can check to see if the game is uh, shut down or, or, or over. We then Let's, let's comment this. So yeah, we get the game over state. Just because we're getting the game over state, that does not mean the game is over. Um, so I just move my comment around a little bit there. So if the game is uh, not over, what we then want to do is format t, uh, and then we want to print uh, the result of our status function. Uh, we want to scramble the sitcom. With guest letters. Um, so that the player can see where we're at in the game. Uh, and we've got four lines left. What we're then going to do is get the letter and use the get letter function we defined with the guest letters um, variable. We're then going to check if equal nil position letter Litter letter um, sitcom, and what we're going to do is call game with sitcom sitcom lives one minus lives. done. 
So a um, little bit perhaps confusing here. Uh, I'm going to show you um, some of the things that we're doing here is on lines 55 and 56. Uh, this is super easy. Uh, 1 minus 10 is 9. It's basically a small utility function for basically decrementing a, a number and getting the value in place. Um, I don't know why I got rid of those. Cons is a way of creating a new list from items in another list. So we can cons 1 to the list 2 and 3 and we get the list of 1, 2 and 3. Um, and what we're doing here then is we are getting the letter um, from the the player and we're checking to see if uh, nil is equal to the position of the letter in the sitcom. Basically, the event or the letter, does it exist in, in the, the sitcom? If it doesn't, um, we then call game recursively again with sitcom and we pass in one fewer lives than this iteration had and we pass in guest letter with building up a new set of guest letters to the uh, parameters uh, and this is our game function so I've compiled that up I'm gonna uh, open the the repo on the right here let's go for it so you can see we've got our lives we've got our letters we've got a sitcom uh, this is clearly how I met your mother so I'm gonna say how I met your mother there we go um, I got it um, so I, I it didn't print out the complete thing there so I am going to um, just uh, copy this in here just because I want it elsewhere and I'm gonna recompile that and we're going to give that another go. Uh, I think this is friends. There we go. Uh, yeah, so we, we've printed out the status. We saw um, what happened here. Uh, ignore this for now. Um, so yeah, that worked. Uh, at least I won. So let's try that again. And I'm going to throw this game, because that's how I met your mother again. I'm just going to put in numbers. You can see the lives decrementing there. Uh, and you can see that the game was over. I've lost. Uh, that is it. You know, that is all there is to a um, hangman game in Common Lisp. I uh, appreciate that this was super quick. Um, and we've introduced some new ideas. I'm going to copy the code into the video description. Um, if you've got any questions, just drop me a comment. Um, I'm trying to get better at paying attention to them. Uh, otherwise, find me on Twitter. I'm Neil underscore Monroe. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, it'll ping my phone, so I'll, I'll see that you've messaged me. Um, but I, I hope that was interesting. I'm going to try and get this uploaded um, today, although it's getting pretty late in the day. Um, so I don't know if this will render on time. But here we are. I uh, hope that was fun. I hope you, you learned something interesting. I hope you're staying safe during the coronavirus lockdown. Um, I will be working on a tic-tac-toe or a knots and crosses game, depending on where you're from. Uh, for next week we'll be doing it in Python Common Lisp again and after that we'll start looking at some more interesting projects I'm not quite sure what they're going to be yet but I've also I'm going to be uploading a video on how to install Common Lisp on your development machine it's not a massive process it's about 20 minutes um, so that's going to get uploaded as well um, and you can you can follow along with these lessons online so thanks very much for watching please like share subscribe all that you know youtube -y business stuff uh, and have a good day